Hi, this is Tino with Bluesy News. I'm at Winter Nam 2015, and I'm standing next to Doug Jackson, uh, currently the guitarist of Ambrosia, but he's got a long career. Originally from Colorado, a transplant now to Los Angeles, Berkeley School of Music. Thanks for the invitation. How did you get so blessed to be able to work with Joe and Drummond from Ambrosia? Well, originally I had gotten a call from Joe in 1995 to sub. 20 years ago. Yeah, to sub for uh, David Pack. And at the time, I wasn't able to do it. And it was one of those situations where I was just so bummed out because it was like, there, here's this great opportunity, and I had the flu or something like that. And anyway, that went away. And then five years later, I got a, another call, and it was a last-minute kind of thing. So I had to learn an hour and a half's worth of music in a very brief amount of time. I don't remember. I think, I think I stayed up for like three days in a row or something like that <laughs> because it was all the progressive... Uh, rock music that uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with because people are familiar more with the hits. Now, speaking of Berkeley and prog rock, you were definitely prepared, though, when the when the call came. I was. I was blessed to get through it. You know, let's put it that way. I, I did my homework. Obviously, hit enough to, to get the gig, which was good. So. And prior to Ambrosia, what what style were you playing? What bands? What were you? What is blues? I mean, what do you think of when you hear blues? Uh, you know, I I'm kind of a mixed bag guy. I've gone through different phases uh, over the years, and it's kind of like I come full circle. So I go through phases when I'm playing the blues a lot and mostly when I'm playing the blues I'm mostly playing with uh, my fingers and I don't uh, use a guitar pick. I, I like all of it so I just kind of try to keep my hands in all of it and uh, one of the things I I trained for growing up was I wanted to always be a studio musician so the guys I was following and reading about in magazines were guys like Tommy Tedesco and Howard Roberts and then Larry Carlton and Lee Rittenauer and those guys, Jay Graydon. And I knew that you had to be able to play a lot of styles and you needed to be able to read well. So I spent a lot of time working on that stuff as a kid. You know, by the time I'd gotten to Berkeley, I'd already had a pretty solid fundamental understanding of uh, harmony and, you know, and I could read well already, so. And then you also was able to study with the late uh, Green? Uh, Ted Green. Ted Green, right. I was very fortunate to study with Ted Green, yes. Um, Ted was a genius, and he just had an incredible way of communicating harmonic concepts and the style of uh, playing solo guitar. He plays like a piano player on the guitar. Unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot of documentation on his work. There's some videos on YouTube, and I think he did one record. But uh, he's he's one of those guys that's you know beloved by guitar players everywhere. He's just. Uh, he was always a very gentle man. Uh, a guitar top, player's top. guitar player, right? That was he, that was him, absolutely. Going into prog rock, is this kind of the ultimate challenge? It, it was an easy transition because I kind of I have a background in playing fusion music, you know, and and that music requires a lot of technique, Correct. and harmonic knowledge. So I had already, you know, had my own fusion band. I had a record that I put out that I recorded in 1993, which is called Storm Chaser. And I got written up in some of the guitar matches. As a solo artist? As a solo artist. So yes, the answer is yes. I felt, you know, very prepared musically to play that stuff. The thing with Ambrosia that made it trickier was the singing. Because Ambrosia is a vocal group. So there's four-part harmony stacks going all the time while you're playing some odd meter stuff at the same time. So it's kind of like a juggling act. You know, I, I eventually got it under my hands. Now, with that said, I saw you a few months back at House of Blues uh, here locally. And that was the best vocal performance I had ever seen with you and Joe harmonizing with uh, Ken, Ken, Ken Stacy. Stacey. Yes, and Mary Drummond and Burley and Chris. I mean, everybody is singing at any given time all together. You know, we got little different songs where, you know, maybe Burley and Mary are singing, and there's spots where it's me and Ken or Joe backing up Ken as he's singing a lead. So, yeah, it's, uh, well, first of all, thank you for that uh, compliment. Those guys are amazing singers. I, you know, I've learned so much about singing. Singing has not been a forte of mine, but over the years I've learned how to sing better. Nice. So it's uh, naturally a bass. Yeah, exactly. But I can hit G sharps and A's and D's. I'm doing that a lot in the band. So Nice. I wouldn't want to do it a lot <laughs> for very long. You mentioned you do session work. You have a website? I do, as a matter of fact. It, it, it went on to line today. It's uh, DougJacksonGuitar.com. I hope that you'll all take a, a chance to 
to check it out. I've got videos and some music up there and pictures of different folks I've played with over the years, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited about it. It was, uh, uh, you know, I've been delaying on this for way too long, so it's got uh, pretty much a everything you need to see what I've done. So awesome! Yeah. Well, I've seen it firsthand, and it's awesome. Ambrosia is a band that really threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting what I ended up seeing that night. And, like, again, it was the best vocal live performance I had ever seen in my entire life. Wow. And I've been to a lot of gigs. I'm just speaking personally for myself. Well, wow, thank you. So, um, From all of us. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Doug. This is Tino, Bluesy News. We're at Winter Nam 2015, and the excellent guitarist, Doug Jackson. Thanks, man.